What's better than talking with one expert guest? Or talking with two, of course. In this special episode of SME TV News and Views, our expert panel discusses and explains class actions, the legal litigation aspects, the financial aspects, and all the stuff that's in between. Sometimes there are moments in life when things go horribly wrong. I'm not talking about bad luck. I'm referring to an issue or the result of another person or third party, or maybe even a government department. Now imagine that it's not just you that suffered. There could be others like you. You may have the beginnings of a class action. Joining me today to discuss this is Rick Mitri from Mitri Lawyers and Theo Kutselis from Archangel Wealth. Welcome, Rick. Thank you for having us. Welcome, Theo. Nice to be here. I'm going to jump straight in, Rick. What is a class action? A class action is an action taken in court against a party that has caused damage to others. And the others is a group of people. The others is a group of people. Right. So you, there is a, a person or an entity, say it's a business or a company, that's had something happen. Yes. Uh, that's been pro probably most likely out of their control. Um, they want to get some kind of compensation for what they've gone through or the damages that, that has happened. And if they find themselves not alone, they can get others to join a class, just like you think of a class in school. So it's a group of people and then take that matter to court. That's right. The, the law is that you have to have a minimum of seven class members before it can be called a class action. So there is a minimum for a class? Seven. Okay. And that, that's the only minimum from there, isn't it? Yes. So whether you get litigation funding, and, and we'll cover that later on in the interview, but when you get litigation funding, seven's not quite enough? No, nowhere near enough. In fact, most litigation funders are not attracted until they see a large amount of damages uh, that are going to be uh, awarded by the court. Uh, uh, seven, uh, Seven's probably not going to do it. Not going to do it unless each each uh, person, each member of the class has lost you know a couple of million dollars in it. Maybe there's uh, the, uh, it may attract a small litigation funding, but because uh, that's where the work is, isn't it? Gathering a class. That's right. You know, Aaron Brockovich style. It's about finding, signing them up, recruiting them, getting them to participate in the class. Book building. That's right, book building. Okay. So you were recently a keynote speaker at a uh, litigation funding conference, um, venture capitalists from New York, but they were here in Sydney. Yes. So it was very safe. Uh, and you've got a couple of class actions already underway. So you're very experienced in this area, but there's another side to a class action. There's the, the financial side. Um, so Theo, when people are part of a class action and they're going to sue for, for damages and it's financial compensation... They have to get the paperwork ready. Yes, uh, Angela, they have to get the paperwork ready. Uh, our job is to basically assist in quantifying what was the damage caused. Put it's, a dollar figure that's right. on the damage caused. Because it's easy for someone to say, well, I think you've done this many millions worth of a damage. But you, you can't just say it. You have to be able to prove it. Precisely. So that, that's the big difference That's the big there. difference. Now, you're the group CEO of Archangel Wealth. You've had many, many years of um, experience in this in the financial world. And of course, you understand that when you've got to quantify something, it, you, you often have to work backwards to find the origins of being able to quantify it. That's right? where, that's where the, the, the majority of the issues uh, arise from. And that is being able to put that uh, documentation, of course, together when the uh, record keeping and uh, financial accounts are not in a very good shape. Because people don't go into something and they're not working in their business or in any personal aspect with the view that, oh, I might have to sue someone, so I better have my paperwork organised. But Angela, look, even, even before that, a lot of people, uh, they, they uh, make the same error and that is working in the business and not on the business, yeah? You know, there's decades of thought behind that absolutely, one. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Now, look, as a CPA um, and the range of experts that you've got in your firm, mm -hmm your customers or your clients would have access to a whole range of experts depending on what quantification they need of their losses, what their area of expertise. You know, maybe they weren't able to pay their mortgage, so you've got to backtrack on that kind of a loss. And then, of course, nothing is straightforward there, though, with financials. No, it's, it's, it's uh, nothing is straightforward. My job um, is to sit down with a client and, and predetermine what was the damage caused. And when? Then, and when, of yep. course, uh, what were the relevant issues and then work backwards to be able to quantify with a dollar figure. And we have the resources available 
I have uh, business analysts. I have people that can re, uh, re, re-examine and correct, of course, uh, financial records to show the correct position. So the whole angle is covered. So that lawyers yes. are happy. Well, Rick is happy most of the time with me. Because... He, is, he is happy most yes, of the time. Yes. But, um, Rick, this is a big stumbling block for people. It's like kind of an emotional barrier because, first of all, they're probably seriously and emotionally invested in the loss that's happened. So it can affect people in a horrible psychological way. Of course. You know, what they're going through. Then it's it's a matter of, you know, when you ask them to have their documentation for financial for, to quantify the loss, that often is another, oh, I don't know if I can do that. That's mm. another huge barrier to the class actually being able to move forward. It is. So that your job of, of actually going into litigation to getting the right outcome for the class is then quite a bit reliant on the quantification. Well, one of the most important things in uh, the preparation of a class action is the monetary aspect, the, the, the uh, determination of the amount of damages for a number of reasons. Uh, uh, but the main reason being that to attract a litigation funder, you have to tell him or her or it, you've got to tell them what... Uh, what's the, in it for them. What's in it for them. And if it's uh, only a, sh- a small amount of damages, uh, uh, you know, they may not be interested. But if it's a lot, uh, a large amount, then they'll be interested in coming along and, and funding that litigation and uh, taking their uh, share, whatever that may be, uh, from the profits. Well, actually, that's a, good, that's a good point to bring up. Litigation funders make money because they view a class action as an investment and a return on that. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, they invest their money in the action in the, and uh, they uh, expect... Uh, a, re- a good return because they're taking a risk. If they lose, uh, then all their money goes and they sometimes have to pay the costs of the other side if, if we lose. So it's a... It's, a, a, it's, it's a, their risk. It's a risk. Right. And quite often you, you, you know that class actions can come about if they're built solidly and there's a good case where a legal funder will come along, fund the class action, and there's often no financial stress to the class members. There's, there's no financial stress whatsoever. Even in adverse orders, they don't have to find the money to pay out uh, the cost of the other side, for example. Well, probably they've suffered quite a bit of loss anyway and finding, right. finding more money to pay legal costs and, and is that's, a huge issue. That's the whole uh, basis of access to justice. They, and, and what about the financial, when they have to quantify the financial loss, is, are those kind of expenses also covered by the litigation funder? Uh, not always. But to uh, some degree. To some degree. Uh, and uh, uh, in, at the end of the day, uh, after someone like Archangel Wealth uh, uh, presents a, uh, a, uh, a, a study of the uh, loss of da- and, the, and the damages, etc. Yep. Uh, it goes to uh, the uh, uh, forensic accountants that are appointed by the by the by the defendants uh, to test to have a view to have a view our work as well yeah. to review yeah, yeah. and uh, see and see whether it stacks yeah, up and it, it can go to court yeah. where you know you don't want holes to be punched in the thing that's most vital yeah. which is the the cost of it yeah. but also angela you raised uh, you touched on, on a, a very very important part of this it's not just the legal perspective it's not just the numbers most of the time because these people have been uh, have been damaged financially mm-hmm. so the most important bit is the emotional side of things they'll say well look theo you work with the um, uh, with Rick. You work with with Mitri lawyers, but right now we we don't know where to start from. But also, more importantly, we don't know what to do after this thing is over. So for us, it's more of a listening role, understanding, making them understand what the issues are all about. And they say, "Look, just do what you guys and do the best for us." So the more concern about having people that that listen, understand, and talk to them. The other side, though, to Theo, is that you uh, would be with clients while they're going through that financial turmoil. Yes. Because there would be a lot of their lives that have been financially impacted. Absolutely. And you, you have to help them get through that. Yes. Yeah, so it's not just um, uh, to put the plaster on their leg. No. Then you have to, of course, go through. Uh, they the... could lose their business. Absolutely. They might have lost their livelihood. Absolutely. They their need home. someone. They need someone to hold their hand yeah. saying, okay, well, we, we tried for this. We were able to get this. Now let's map out a roadmap for you to, to get out and to recover. That's yeah. the most important bit. It's not. It's not just having their day no, in court. No, no, no. It's the lead up to then, exactly, and then it's post and having a strategy afterwards as well. So that mm. we know that that's 
unfortunately not always um, a good ending for mm-hmm. some things, but sunny they days do. come. They do. You do move forward. However, if you don't get good legal advice and good financial advice, you could find yourself in a very different situation. That's quite correct, yes. So typically, how long does it take to get a matter in court for a class action? It depends on uh, the the size of the matter, and this is why, again, why the assessment of damages is important. Uh, uh, Once we know what the damages are and how many people are involved, then we can uh, uh, assess uh, the kind, uh, the amount of work that needs to be done, when it's going to have to uh, be done by, uh, what uh, submissions we make to the court, what sort of evidence we get. All of that has to be prepared. Expert evidence, uh, apart from accountancy, there's experts who uh, will determine, uh, will uh, will assist in determining. Whether or not there's been a, uh, you have to you have to have proof. That's right. Have to have you bring proof. the experts in yeah. to present that. So but after that, it, it it takes longer than a normal matter to be heard. It does because they're normally big matters, uh, 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 and they have to be big for you to attract, as I said, the well, attention. Let's use the light rail case. Yep. Right. That is a class action. In the Sydney light rail instance, you have formed a class. That is the matter is underway right now. There's uh, litigation continues and a hearing is pending. That's been a matter of two plus years? That's right. And the main thing that held us up was the discovery of documents. The, 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 the state um, has a, 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 a database that, that takes months to go through. And, and we have a database that takes months to go through. And we have to exchange uh, documents so that we see what uh, they've got and they have to see what we've got, so to speak. But it's, and it's not unusual, though, because if these matters are huge... Um, and the current light rail, Sydney light rail class action is is looking at uh, damages of three hundred and fifty million dollars. So that's a huge issue. Mm. Then you would expect that there are, you know, a whole team on one side and a whole team on the other side, and that it is the job of both teams to that's win. Right. So right. equal dedication. Well, we've got a equal list motivation. Of, a list of about seven or eight major uh, expertise uh, com- corporations or, or, or individuals giving us uh, expert reports. And the government has the same thing. Right. Of so course. It, yeah, it does have... Uh, it's, a, it's a view, right? Here's mm. what we think, our mm. expert thinks. Here's what our expert thinks. Mm. Now, there's forensic accountants on both sides too. Uh, forensic accountants are normally on the side of the defendant. They just want to test the, 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 the uh, uh, losses that we've uh, su- suggested and submitted. And also to look at our methodology as to how yeah. do we prepare to derive that figure. So it's not mm. just we think no, no, it's no, no, this no. much. No, it's a lot more than and I just think. hand it in. Precisely. Well, and, that, and that's the point, right? Every aspect of a case has to be able to be backed up with proof. Absolutely. Documentation, uh, the best that you can provide, mm. because you already know going into a matter that the other side doesn't want to pay. And they don't want to admit they're wrong. Exactly. Well, that's what litigation is all about, I suppose. It's what keeps you in a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's important. Well, um, Rick, there's been um, some political activity and a recent uh, High Court decision which has amended some rules around litigation funding or class yes, actions. Yes, uh, uh, there used to be what was what's called common fund orders allowed. Common fund orders are orders made by a court uh, that uh, anyone who benefits, not only the class members but uh, people outside the class, which are called uh, group members, uh, are able uh, uh, to get some sort of uh, benefit from the from the uh, uh, damage uh, damages amount mm-hmm. that's awarded by the court. Uh, they also need to make a contribution according to a common fund order to the to the cost of running the case. They can't just say that I uh, I'm, a, I'm a group member yep. uh, and I need my share. But they uh, 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 they were when a common fund order is given, they also have to make a contribution to right. their the common the, the high court recently earlier this year said that uh, uh, common fund orders are illegal. Are, they're not legal. If you are an outsider and you get benefit, you don't have to make a contribution to the uh, uh, to to the to the to the litigation funder. Right. Uh, it's a form of unjust enrichment. I'm just can't. I still haven't been able to work out myself. But having understood that what's taken place, it still doesn't prevent class actions from taking place. Oh, here. no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't and, that's, and that's very important. So while we're not a, as litigious, say, as the US in class actions... Quite frankly, we are. We uh, are? Uh, and, well, in fact, uh, uh, class actions were uh, originally originated in Australia. There you go. And, and the, uh, the Australian system was the first jurisdiction, Australian jurisdiction was the first one to allow litigation funding. 
and to allow a third party to benefit from the amount awarded by the court. Which is the funder. Which is the funder. If, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to have that organised. That's right. Theo, in, uh, in your company, you have a range of experts. Yes, we do. Like? We have people, of course, that uh, are experts in uh, uh, the various accounting software packages, which gives us the flexibility to be able to determine how accurate those records are. Uh, we have uh, qualified uh, CPAs and chartered accountants uh, that do a lot of the um, uh, analysis of those figures to give us the the results that uh, uh, that we need to, to 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 work with. Because often people may not have an accountant or financial advisor that can manage this kind of thing. They may have been just using a bookkeeper. Or they only see their accountant once a year. Precisely, and, and this is and where they the issues, can't handle that. These are where the issues are, actually, Angela. Of course, that people. Oh yeah, but I've been with my accountant for so many years, but. He's really a lodger of tax returns. And there's this nothing not, wrong with that. No, nothing there, wrong with there's that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you need to get the right expert for the right job. Exactly. And, and, and so it's, not, it's not just the course for class actions, but now in general, it's very difficult to run a business, as you very well know, actually, Angela, uh, without having the appropriate people to hold your, your hand. And this is what it's all about. And again, uh, when we talk to people, their accounts are in disarray because, oh yeah, but I did it for bass purposes only. You need a lot more clarity than that. Well, I think right now is a com- is a, a good example with COVID. Yeah. And, and for instance, the uh, mandatory tenancies code and the kind of legal activity that's probably going to come about with tenants who aren't paying their rent and landlords who may or may not budge, depending on which side of the fence you're on. And they're going to need to, the tenants are going to need to show financial activity to yeah. prove yeah. that they could or couldn't afford something. And the other uh, additional aspect, actually, Angela, is that March is deadline. Those uh, job keepers are coming to an end. Yep. And uh, although the country is doing quite well, and there's, a, there's an abundance of confidence in the air. We don't know what the ramifications are going to be. And all the I more think, is... I think we suspect. Yeah. I think we suspect, right? Yeah, but also because actually, Angela, we, we, we as a firm, uh, we talk to all of our clients that we need to get together a lot closer now than ever before. Doing your basses once a quarter and lodging your returns ain't going to cut it. So frequent connectivity with your financial advisors is a good tip on being not just prepared Mm -hmm. but organised because here's the sign, right? You never know what's going to happen. Exactly, but also, Angela, what we've done is uh, not only getting closer with our clients but also with our strategic partners, banks, of course, now, we've invited them. They are part of our our association, our, our, our business, whereby now they're starting to understand and work in with us for the desired results, for a win-win-win situation. So there's collaboration required from all angles. You have to. And on that note, I think the tip here to learn is that get good legal advice, get good financial advice, not just once, but make sure that's part of your business strategy and your business plan so you can move forward and recover. To everyone out there that hasn't subscribed, I would suggest you press the bell button. To the Piermont Studio, thank you so much for making us look and sound good. To the SMEA Association, without you, this wouldn't be possible to help the SME community. And of course, one more thing, if you have any tips, tricks, comments or questions, you can send them straight to me. News at smea.org.au and we're across all the socials. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Theo. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.